Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about a few secondary sources. I'm going to focus on citing to books and journal articles, but remember that secondary sources is a catch-all term that encompasses anything that isn't a primary source of law in the area of law that you are practicing. It doesn't mean just books. It can include things like blogs on websites, encyclopedia and dictionary entries, and specialized sources like restatements. Remember that we talked last week about how citation can be a way to demonstrate that your argument is backed up by persuasive law. In your first year legal writing and research class, you may have been told never to cite to a secondary source in a legal document. That is generally true, but there are some secondary sources that judges and attorneys find persuasive, such as restatements or particular treatises. In a law review article, much of your research will be in secondary sources, and some of them have unusual citations. So our focus today is on Rule 15, or Rule B8 in the Blue Pages for books, and on Rule 16, or B9 in the Blue Pages for periodicals. At first glance, these two types of sources seem very different, but sometimes it's hard to tell what a source is when you look at it on the shelf. Compare American Jurisprudence, which is cited as a book under the special citation forms of Rule 15, and American Law Reports, which is cited under Rule 16 as a periodical. They are both bound print sources published by West that come in a series and sit on the shelves in our library. Once you look at the citation, though, it's more obvious that these are different types of sources. American Jurisprudence, which we often call AMJUR because of the Blue Book abbreviation, is an encyclopedia of American law, so it falls under Rule 15, the same way a dictionary or a treatise would. American Law Reports, on the other hand, contains articles that analyze a case or legal concept in depth. It is updated much more often and is therefore considered a periodical. Books and treatises are among the easiest resources to cite to in the Blue Book. For most sources, you will only need the name of the author, the title of the book, the page you are citing, and the year. You may omit the editor or translator if there isn't one, and you don't need to include the edition unless there have been multiple editions. The same goes for the publisher, unless there have been multiple publishers, including the name isn't necessary. This rule makes sense if you think about what it is you're trying to do in a citation. You're just giving enough information to your reader so that they'll be able to locate the specific book you are looking at. If there's only one version, then the author, title, date, and page are all that they'll need. If there are multiple publishers or editors, then you need to start getting more specific. Oh, a quick side note. You'll notice that the author and title in a book are done in small caps in the white pages. You'll only use this in footnotes, but to get your font into small caps, Select the text that you want to change, click on the little arrow under the font menu in Word, then check the box for small caps. Periodical materials encompass law review articles, newspaper articles, and annotations like the American Law Reports. Citing to an article requires a little more detail than a book citation. You need the author or author's names, the full title of the article in italics, then the volume number, abbreviated title of the journal or newspaper, the page number the article starts on, then the page or pages you are citing to, followed by the year of the publication in parentheses. In the case of a newspaper that publishes daily, you'll need the full day, month, and year the article was published on. We will talk more about citing to online newspaper articles when we talk about electronic sources. Just keep in mind that you need to check Blue Book Rule 18 if you're citing to an online source. So let's face it, most of the time you are doing writing and research in front of the computer, so this is what you'll be looking at. Check out what happens when I copy these two provisions about the dead ship doctrine out of American Law Reports and American Jurisprudence. You can see how ALR is more article-based and AMJUR is more like an encyclopedia entry, but look at what happens when I ask Westlaw to give me a citation. In ALR, it skips the author name and the article title completely. It doesn't use small caps, and it writes out a full parenthetical where just the year would do. Even in AMJUR, the use of small caps for the abbreviation is missing, and the subject title isn't italicized. 
If you were writing this citation for an article, you'd have to do a lot of editing, and in the case of ALR, you'd have to go back into the source to get the author name and article title, so be careful when using Westlaw's citation copy tool as a shortcut. So let's fix these citations. There, that's better. Now these have both been corrected for use in a law review article. Keep in mind that the use of small caps and italics will be different if you are citing in a memo or a brief. Always check the blue pages for the differences. So next week we will get into citing case law, including the use of parentheticals and when to use prior and subsequent history.